Now, I have to be very clear one more time, this video is being pre-recorded. So if there is a contract signing, which I don't know why there would be on a Saturday morning before this video would get public on YouTube, then everything we're going to be talking about in this commentary is down the drain. And quite frankly, it would be good news if these contracts got signed and this video's topic would not really be relevant. But alas, the contracts have not been signed yet. Of course, we are talking about the Detroit Red Wings and the two RFAs who still need deals. Moritz Sider and Lucas Raymond. Two guys that are going to demand significant money. Two guys who probably already have demanded significant money. But two guys whose presences on the team are so valuable that, hey, the fact that they are unsigned at the moment does bring up some concern when you consider it's been so far into the offseason, and when you consider that Jonathan Berggren also needs a contract and there is a limited salary cap space remaining, 17.6 million to be exact, you start to wonder where the Red Wings are going to go with this. With all this in mind, though, let's go out there and talk about an article published on MLive.com yesterday by Ansar Khan. Red Wings mailbag. Is there any concern that Cider and Raymond are still unsigned? This will be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and read it yourself, but I will say MLive is behind a paywall, so you do need the subscription to be able to read the website. No matter, though, if you do have that subscription, then this article is going to be linked in the description below. However, I'll also leave a link in the description to this Will Blogs article on RedWingsInsider.com talking about answers on why Raymond Insider don't have contracts. What this article does is it summarizes some of the same ideas brought up in the MLive piece, so, you know, we can screenshot this one. It's not behind a paywall, anyway. So, if you go over to this RedWingsInsider.com article, it actually has some of the questions and answers brought up onto the Ansarcon piece, starting out with a question from Mike over here. It's been really quiet over contracts for Cider and Raymond. Iserman, at his post-UFA presser, said that he and the Red Wings were working on the deals. Is there any reason to think that evidence for an impasse has developed? There seems to be no sense of urgency. Is it possible that training camp will open in late September and these two will still be unsigned? The answer that is written out here says this. It often takes much of the offseason to agree on money and terms with high-profile RFAs. The urgency sometimes isn't triggered until shortly before training camp. The team and the players would prefer to sign for some maximum term of eight years. Cider, 23, will get more than Raymond, 22, but probably not more than Larkin. Larkin sort of set the bar with his eight-year deal at an AAV of 8.7 mil. The Red Wings believe Larkin deserves to be their highest paid player. He is the longest tenured Red Wing at nine seasons, the captain, and has been the face of the franchise during a rough stretch. Perhaps Sider comes in at around 8.5 million, and when Sider is signed, it will set the bar for Raymond, whose cap it will probably be around $1 million less in the 7.5 to 7.7 range. The trend around the league has seen teams locking up their young talent to seven- and eight-year contracts. If the sides can't agree on the long-term deals, they'll sign bridge contracts for less AAV, maybe in the $6 million range. Now, of course, these numbers, 8.5, 7.7, these are just kind of idealistic numbers for the eight-year deal, which is not guaranteed in this situation at all. There are conversations to be had about Steve Eiserman and his willingness to do bridge deals for guys coming straight out of their ELC contracts. We've already made videos about this kind of topic. But when it comes to the bridge conversation, when it comes to the dollar amounts, everybody kind of acknowledges that the cap space isn't really the issue here. It's just whether or not these two sides, or three sides I guess you could say, can agree on some sort of a deal. Either way, let's go out there and read the next question and answer brought up on this article. You have a viewer named GD who asks, Could Mo and Lucas hold out and miss the start of the season? I don't like our playoff chances to begin with after this underwhelming offseason, but this would absolutely destroy any hopes. Is this possible? 
The reply says, It would be surprising if deals aren't done before training camp, or at least before the regular season opener. For what it's worth, Moritz Sider hasn't missed a game in three seasons, appearing in 246 consecutively, including a key April 9 contest against Washington after spending time in the hospital earlier that day. He seems like the type of player who will do whatever it takes to be in the lineup on October 10th, even if it means signing a bridge deal and then revisiting talks on a long-term extension in the future. And, as stated above, once one is signed, the other is bound to come to terms in short order. Now, there's a little bit extra written about in this article. Again, the links are in the description, but the idea of Cider and Raymond missing time. That, I feel, is so bold and honestly kind of uncharacteristic, I would say. Because when it comes to this, of course it's a possibility. Like, you can't go out there and dismiss it entirely. Oh, could Raymond and Sider drag this entire contract signing process out into the preseason and eventually the regular season? Yeah, it's possible, but is it likely? Probably not. Especially when you consider who Raymond and Sider are as guys. We've seen these guys, we've seen their interviews, we've seen their dedication, their motivation on the team, and just exactly how it is they feel about making money in this league. I mean, we haven't had any rumors suggesting that they would want to get extremely high, extremely expensive cap hits. And so when you think about the last time an NHL RFA eventually missed out time in the regular season because he did not sign right away... I think everybody's mind refers to the William Nylander situation with Toronto a few years ago. Right now, he's making whatever it is, $13, $12 million, yeah. But before that, on the contract that he had prior to, that contract did not get signed until partway through December of that year. William Nylander is like the biggest situation of a guy who actually did take his RFA negotiations so far to the point that he missed out time and playing time in order to get the dollars that he wanted, and of course, Cal Dubas acquiesced and gave Nylander the money that he was asking for. There also have been other guys like Trevor Zegras and Jamie Drysdale from last year who didn't sign right away, and they ended up missing training camp because their contract discussions took too long. We had seen the effects of how those guys fared in the regular season, Trevor Zegras was not great, Jamie Drysdale got traded, and the rest is history. So, when you think about the possibility here, I mean, I don't want to say it's like, oh, predictable that guys like Zagris and Drysdale and Nylander would be grubby, money-hungry, whatever, penny-pinching kind of guys. They want to get every dollar they can, and Cider and Women are not like that. I'm not going to say that. Like, of course, that's a very extreme way to put it. But to consider what we had seen in those situations and the kinds of personalities involved. William Nylander is a big game player, and it's been very well reported that his dad, Michael Nylander, is a very difficult negotiator. Trevor Zegras is a flashy American kid who is really good friends with Jamie Drysdale, and those two guys kind of, I don't know, I don't know if banded together is the right word, but like, there are already rumors of Pat Verbeek and the Ducks not wanting Zagros on their team anymore anyway. Snyder and Raymond, while they're pretty good friends, they're part of a system that believes in them, and I don't think it would be fair to say that Steve Eiserman doesn't have much faith in what it is Snyder and Raymond could bring to the Red Wings long term. It's just whether or not he'd feel comfortable paying that extreme money at this moment before these guys have had significant NHL experience in the playoffs or anything beyond three years in the league itself. It would make sense if Eisman wants to take this slow and go bridge deal. But either way, the two players involved seem like guys who very much will just want to be with the Red Wings, no matter what it takes. Sure, they might prefer the eight-year deal, but if they're just not able to get it, then okay, Settle down, buddy. You can't go out there and hold out heading into December and let Steve Eiserman of all people, acquiesce to what it is that you want. I mean, honestly, I feel like for Kyle Dubas, when he let William Nylander get the money that he wanted in December, I don't think Steve Eiserman is capable of doing that. I don't think Steve Eiserman will be like, okay, fine, here, take the money that you want, just come play for us the rest of the year. I feel like Steve Eiserman, honestly, would be okay with sitting out the entire year with these guys and being like, okay, you don't want to sign for this bridge deal? You really want that long-term extension at an eight, nine million dollar AAV? Well, sorry, we're not going to give it to you. No ifs, fans, or buts about it. Either you sign this contract at a bridge deal or you don't play. Kyle Dubas was not strong enough to give that kind of a stranglehold on Nylander. Steve Eiserman, though? I think it's possible. But of course, it's probably more likely that both of these guys just end up signing at some point in the offseason anyway. They get training camp, and then they get 
their behinds into the Red Wings lineup on the first day of the season and then projectably for the rest of the season too, right? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the Detroit Red Wings and the idea of Cider and Raymond missing time with the team in 2024-2025? Do you think this is possible? Do you think it's not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 99. And bye.